The Music Box Written by Constanza Bade Illustrations by Philippe Vaucher Copyright 1999 to 2019 Read by the author To the Magic in All of Us Once upon a time around 1736 in a village in Austria a young boy named Frederick lived in a plain, simple, two-room house with his father. One night, six-year-old Frederick woke from a dream. He called to his father from his bed. Frederick's eyes followed the shadows formed by the candlelight his father brought in from the parlor. Pa, papa, I want to live with the music inside me, said the young boy. I'm a banker, son, not a musician, answered his father. What was party tool? In the armoire, can you hear it? asked Frederick. A box in the open armoire glowed strangely in the moonlight that came through the window. Please, son, try to sleep, said his father. The rhythm takes me, the rhythm shakes me, answered Frederick, to which his father replied, Sleep, Frederick, it's late. His father caressed Frederick's head. He ran his fingers through his son's short hair. He stepped back into the parlor, sighed, and rubbed his own head. He set the candle on the table. As shadows danced on the wall, Franz looked at the accounts he'd been balancing. With another sigh, he pulled out a fresh piece of writing paper. He wet his quill in the inkwell and wrote a letter to his sister Alice in Metz, France. Dearest Alice, I will not pretend that things have been easy the last few years since the death of my dear wife, Emilia. Frederick seeks something I cannot offer him. The only thing I can teach him is numbers. But he won't have it. He longs for music and adventure. I hope one day he may reach you, for the story of you, my dear sister, is the closest adventure I know of. Your loving brother, Franz. Upon receiving her brother's letter, unbeknownst to young Frederick, Alice arranged for him to begin lessons with a musician she knew who was traveling to Vienna. Franz did not like the idea very much, but acquiesced to let Frederick take lessons while the maestro would be in Vienna. Young Frederick learned from his opus sheet music. When he left town, Franz gave the maestro the whole box. He thought, if he got rid of the box, Frederick would soon forget his foolish fancy about music and come to his senses about numbers. Alas, it did just the contrary. Frederick became saddened and withdrawn. Why did his father give away Opa's magic box filled with mysteries of music? Oh, thought Frederick with a heavy heart, had he not been a devout enough pupil? If only he had worked as hard at music as his father did at numbers. After the music fled his heart, Frederick and Franz rarely spoke. If they had known how to put music and numbers together, they might have found something to talk about. Deep in his heart, Franz knew music made his boy happy. Franz knew nothing about music. He could only smile and say someday when Frederick sang what he had learned, asking for more lessons. Someday. Before Frederick reached his 20th birthday, his father died of ill health on a cold winter night. He begged his son to go to Alice's. Franz left his son what he had and instructed him to take the train through Germany and inquire about Alice's family once he reached the French border. Alice's name was now Dufresne, by marriage to George Dufresne, and she lived on a family estate of the same name. Of course, Frederick did not go straight to Alice's after his father died. He only did so after he ran out of money and good credit with the people in every town he passed through. Frederick was thrown out of every town, inn and boarding house, and made a very bad name for himself. He was moody, ill-behaved, all because he so wished to find the maestro, and with him the magic of music. But he had not known him by any other name than maestro, and had no idea on which road he might have traveled as the years had passed. If by chance Frederick found a piano in an inn or a tavern, he was happy. 